Most of our leaders go there not because they want to lead, but they start serving their own interest until the next uh, election. Nitazurite atongoria ingi ta ni nitazurite atongoria ingi tondu twarutireirie Kenyata tuguka moi tuguka kivake troka murio Izwe ta riu ni tuonaga rimwe tuhinyirikeire It's a culture of entitlement largely it's a culture of talking down to people rather than listening to them and serving their interests it's a culture of self service it's a culture uh, to, that once you are sent to office, then you, ex you, you expect to be served and you do everything possible to stay in office. Our Kenyan MPs are some of the highest paid MPs in the world, more highly paid than countries which are much richer and better run. They have misused their power for their own private gain, and that's, that's the classic definition of corruption. AFRICOG is a civil society organization that works on issues of corruption and uh, good governance and accountability. We also house the Secretariat of the Kenyans for Peace with Truth and Justice, which is a coalition of uh, over 30 organizations that have been working on accountability starting from the 2008 post-election violence. I think I and all my colleagues the work we're doing, we would be doing it whether we get paid or not. It's basically the lives we live. <laughs> so, uh, so you just do it because it's just as natural as breathing. We get it. Kino tongo ya muagari ne mo doori atu hokei de weira ake oru chana jere ya gere ni ni kere ge da kuma kuri tongo ya churi na gori wa bere ne ketu ge da we get it. Kio shotra di horo agu na mo doa tuke wa ku hokeka. Negada aheo besha sireheru mwana inchi wa kawaida ri waihokeru besha urehe development decision viongozi wakitabua na kwa moyo wao wajue kabisa mimi niko kwa uongozi kwa sababu ya huyu mtu wako ako chini atiba yetu kulingana na vile ilitengenezwa mwana inchi dia ako na nguvu lakini Huyo mwananchi hajui ya teako na, na guvu. We are the ones who legislate. We make laws for this country. And this is who is the owner of this company? But you know, you, ah, you know, we, apana, we, you know, we're the to lost That's why apana. the government has deployed us here. Okay, excuse yes, We will reverse the law. Chapter six is the values on which the country runs. It was a, a very deliberate and uh, ambitious attempt by the makers of the constitution to give thoughts to the culture, the values on which the country ought to run and without which the architecture of the new constitution would really be futile. I'm a member of parliament. We are about 10 members of parliament. That is a... Who you are waiting to hear from who? From God. And you know what? Jesus Christ to call you. This is... That is not we are not making laws. That is not When we have to break it, we break it when we want. This is yeah. not... Yeah. As far as Kenyans' problems are concerned and the desires that they've kept on expressing over the years for a change in leadership, for clean leadership, for leadership with integrity, Chapter 6 is, is really what it's all about. I therefore declare Uru Kenyatta 
If you look at the current uh, government, its two principles, the president and the deputy president, came into power in a way which implicitly negates chapter six. At the time, they were both accused before the International Criminal Court of Crimes Against Humanity. That's about the worst crime that any human being can be accused of. And yet, they set out to take over power. A lot of people thought that uh, just having Chapter 6 uh, would uh, significantly weed out uh, a lot of uh, political and leadership characters. Uh, that uh, didn't have integrity. Uh, and unfortunately, and they thought that would happen with the first uh, general elections, it would happen with appointments that came after the constitution, but unfortunately that has not happened. Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto were not sure at the beginning whether in fact they would be allowed to run, but they rode their luck because at every turn, no public institution was strong enough to stand up to them and to check their run. Uh, and after some time, they gained more, sufficient momentum and basically uh, that was the, the end of the enforcement of Chapter 6 as we know it. The thing people are calling implementation. That we are going to wake up one day because we have written the constitution and we were just going to be able to pick leaders of integrity. That wasn't going to happen. This is a constitution that was imposed on a very badly behaved elite by the population. They were not going to accept and abide by it by day one. It was going to be breathed life by practice. We passed it, we, put, we shoved it down their throats, we, we imposed it on them, and we are going to have to enforce it by practice. And they are going to be defying it. It's, it's not over. It's, we, we have passed the constitution, but we have not institutionalized constitutionalism. Contestation for the Constitution has been going on for decades. What happened over the years was that the Constitution was, was repeatedly attacked by the executive and a very compliant parliament and emptied of all sense. People really believed that there was going to be change. They wanted to see the powers of the president limited. They wanted to see greater equity in the distribution of resources. But in 2005, these hopes were uh, disappointed in the draft which was presented. And indeed, the constitution wasn't changed until 2010 as a result of the 2008 violence. The fact that Kenya went into the 2007 elections with the old constitution meant that we were fighting the same battles for control of state house on an ethnic basis, meaning if you were not represented, you weren't going to get a piece of the cake. Well, protests began and they were, they were put down with great brutality. You had attacks and counter-attacks by, by the varying political groups. What changed in 2008 is that because of the conflict that we had, that conflict left lasting balkanization, lasting polarities within the population. In the context of those polarities, any lack of accountability becomes more difficult to check because the population no longer has a shared aspiration as to what it means to live in one country to be Kenyans. Because people are so polarized, they see things first and, uh, and unfortunately only from the point of view of the side of the political divide that uh, they belong to or that has advantage for them.
agreement on the Constitution was an essential first step to put this country on the road to the new future that Kenyans so desperately seek. It is not enough. It is of course not enough on its own. The Constitution is the beginning, not the end. The challenge now lies in its implementation. Its ideals and ambitions must be put into practice. There are no doubts that massive crimes were committed in Kenya. We are investigating murders, rapes, for displacements, crimes against humanity. ICC had found that uh, there were uh, substantial reasons uh, to believe that they may have committed crimes during the 2007-2008 post-election violence. And those were serious crimes. Well, there was public concern that these uh, two individuals did not qualify for public office. Apart from civil society advocating, it also went to court. A whole series of institutions had caved in. So by the time the ball was kicked down the road to the court, the court basically backed down and refused to implement the constitution. <laughs> A very, very intense campaign was mounted and this campaign was very well financed and it used international public relations firms to sell a narrative and one of the, the narratives that were being peddled then was are we going to allow NGOs to decide who we, we can vote for. Those who think that because they have a big voice through the media through non-governmental organizations, through various European and embassies or embassies of the Western world, Leo, Ajure, Akwamba. Those voices are meaningless. The voice that matters is the voice of the people. We lowered the bar so dramatically. Yeah? But that having done that and brought these people in, I think it's a throwback to the past. Obviously a very unfortunate one. I think it's a legacy problem of the tribalism of, of, of the past, which is why they are there in the first place. They were able to construct very effective ethnic uh, false narratives uh, as to why they were charged. And uh, then, of course, they were able to mobilize uh, using corruption and uh, the patronage and uh, elite and all that sort of thing who took advantage uh, of riding that thing. So it, it's, I, it represents the, everything we wanted the new constitution to get away from. The declaration of the president and the deputy president as being, you know, in office was uh, preceded by um, legal contestation. The newly created Supreme Court uh, presided over petitions about the uh, presidential elections of 2013. And again, civil society stepped into the breach to defend the new constitution to defend the new standards that we had set for ourselves. Civil society was not focused on who had won the elections. What we were saying was that the process was flawed and that uh, a process in which we had inv invested a great deal of energy, time, hope, money uh, had actually collapsed and led to the, elec the, the election results being questionable. It is the decision of the court that the said elections were indeed conducted in compliance with the Constitution and the law. As to whether the third and fourth respondents were validly elected and declared as president-elect and deputy president-elect of the Republic of Kenya respectively, it is the decision of the court 
that the third and the fourth respondents were validly elected. The proceedings were being live streamed. People were following every minute of the case. There was jubilation on the side which felt that it had won. And the opposing side was downcast, it was crushed. It left the country divided down the middle. Surveys that we did shortly after that showed that the country was completely polarized in terms of its opinion and in terms of its confidence in institutions. And that's a division that continues to this day. That sort of behavior leaves those who are excluded, those who feel they've lost, it leaves them feeling deeply resentful, and I don't think that's gone away. The elections which have been conducted were the most expensive in the history of Kenya. The level of use of flashy, you know, campaigning material of helicopters, four-wheel drives, convoys and columns of them. All of this money had to be recuperated. So very quickly, corruption got out of control and the sort of stories you were hearing, the sums that were being mentioned in each individual scandal, it was mind-boggling. The expression, the fish always rots from the head, simply means that once the head is rotten, nothing good will come out of the fish. I know I'll break it again. I'll break the bad law. I'll break it even ten times. We have accepted, embraced, and condoned this sort of behavior, and it has come to be that all politicians behave badly and that to be a politician and to behave bad, uh, badly is an acceptable norm. DCI confirms that there was a conspiracy. She has to tell us why she needed a screen costing 1.7 million using taxpayers' money. The reason why people do this is because they know nothing is going to happen to them. As society, as citizens of this country, we have even insulated ourselves from feeling disgusted or ashamed or even humiliated by what our leaders do. We actually have normalized it to the point where we say, that's what politicians do. <laughs> My nego gengo manasuna. Kilowa ni orachi yure mangeny. Mokuongo en kilowa majonya katongrech. Ok makgi nikech jotele mango do tuni mago gini kijiti form of corruption mo magete mo. Karwa ka nti mo milone black. Ma pesa moro migolo ka yedo anam sana sana jokma tiugi net maricho go ka osa megi. The constitutionalism is still a problem because it is still remaining in a paper. The same same people who are there before the constitution came are still the one which are still existing. The sugarcane farming is based on policies and policies must be carried out by the leaders. Once they don't uphold the integrity part, then the entire business is almost afloat. Asking for a bribe in Kenya is a norm. It is not something secret. Take for example, if you don't know at what time your produce will reach the factory, that itself will call for something to be done extraordinary so that you force your produce into the factory.
A lot of the times we concentrate so much at the national level and forget that we have so many more issues at the local level. We all have to take responsibility and be able to say what sort of leaders we want, how we want to be governed. And then after that, when we decide that this is the criteria that we must ensure that our, lead, our leaders will achieve and maintain, if they don't, we have a responsibility to be able to tell them, I'm afraid that you have to go. when you ask people, do you accept corruption, they reject it. But then I think they, they work with what they have, and what they have is a corrupt system. But I think the desire for, for a corruption-free country remains as deep as ever. The danger with corruption is when it becomes a culture when it becomes so endemic and deep-seated, it's actually a culture, and I think we've reached that point. For ordinary people, you know, giving bribes is just a routine part of their lives. Ordinary people are not doing it because they want to, they're doing it because they have to in many instances. There's an element where we're complicit in corruption as a country, but an element where we're coerced into it. And an element where we don't think anything will be done about it, so we don't report it because the institutions which are supposed to deal with it are so obviously compromised. <laughs> There was a crackdown here in Italy where a lot of people had to bribe their way out of the police stations and some had to be deported back to Somalia and some have now disappeared since then have now disappeared without stress. We've been seeing a lot of police movements, both plain clothes and those who are uniformed police officers. What we've gathered from these people is that uh, their leaders have not been coming out to help them. A lot of women have been raped, a lot of uh, people have been tortured. Uh, even those people who are the real Kenyans, who are with, have their identity cards, they are not spared. Sisi hapa isili tuko na shida sana. Hakuna serikali ya kuangalia sisi. Watoto yetu iko shida. Askari nafukisha sisi kila saa. Wanaingia kwa jumba lete shilingi 1300. Sisi natoa wapi? Hakuna bali ya kutoa sisi mwenyewe tuna tunashinda kudisha hata watoto. There are developments which are really frightening in terms of the way that the state has chosen to respond to the security threats. They have cracked down on entire communities. I think this was a watershed in terms of sections of the population being made to feel that you can't count on the state to protect you. As a matter of fact, the state will target you. What we've had after um, the 2013 elections is 
a situation where Jubilee has created itself around Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto as persons who have successfully denigrated Chapter 6. And then you've got a group of political supporters who tell them you're doing the right thing. And in exchange for that, the, the top leadership will not look too hard at what the, those political leaders are doing at their level. Dani Tamodo, Ine Kedemure, Nakira Gire, Mabe Mokan Mafagaman, Mafagama Utamago to go tattoo, Magua, Mordos Yore Mimi Nagos and Marajua, Aparatoro Jinni, Nimirisi, I have good news like Gujiga, Nimapatia Mapaga Katamu to come out. As you are Angus Ababu Mimi Munyewe, Niangus Ababu Yakurinda, Ire Mandeleo, Abao Mimi and Mosimora is to let Aparatumbo. Yeah. They actually feel that they can stand up in public in front of cameras and say these things. How do you actually openly incite people to violence and provide them with the weapons with which to, to implement that violence? And you think that's okay? This case has been severely undermined by witness interference and politicization of the judicial process. We are facing a very, very dangerous situation when we're heading to the next election. But at the same time, you know, if we look back on the history of Kenya, we would say that even though it's been one step forward, two steps back, on the whole, it's been forward. The people are going to have to learn all these are learning processes. People, for instance, before the new constitution, before the last election, people did not actually know what the role of county governments was going to be. They did not know how much power the county assemblies were going to have. And now they see that these are important offices. This institution is really a very critical institution for them in terms of both governance and development. And we will see whether they will act on it. I think over time they will. It also will attract different kind of people. People, they have more ownership of the resources. Because they, they know their, their resource entitlement, they are able to then make a lot more noise and say, our money is being stolen. Before, we have no idea how much was being stolen because we didn't even know, we didn't have an entitlement. There is a crisis in the sense that uh, we've taken too long to activate uh, integrity provisions and to actually make sure that they are used in the form that the constitution intended. But there is hope. There is hope because uh, citizens still retains the power. Ile kitu tunafanya sisi tunachagua ama watu wanachagua viongozi ambao hawana utu na uongozi bora ni kwa sababu wananchi bado wako kiwango cha chini sana. Sasa naona huyu mtu sasa kija na pesa Hata kama huyo mtu si mzuri, hata kiwa na mtu wainagani, pado watu wanachagua, huyo mtu wakona pesa mingi. Sasa wananchi wenyewe unaona, wanakibiria pesa, wanasaha watu huyo mtu, kuna jabu furani ataeza kuwa, wafanyia bada amiaka mitano. For me, I think change lies on us. If we continue treating our leaders like our masters, then our country will go more worse. I believe that as young people, if we change and decide that we want to see the country go in the right way, if a leader comes down and he comes with an issue that you feel is not right and we just tell them that this is not right, we don't want your money, they'll feel like, hey, these people have changed. <laughs> Wow. I think it's important that citizens keep 
demanding. But they can also use reasons relating to participation to kick out leaders. A leader who undermines the principle of participation is actually acting against chapter 6. I think now that we've had a moment for reflection, we need to think uh, seriously how to take a strategic approach and make sure that we lock out a lot of undeserving characters. The only answer is vigilance. You've got to keep watch on government. You've got to keep watch on, uh, on people in public office because people, when they get power, tend to misuse it. Good leadership has to be exacted. It has to be demanded by the people. The fact that government has been attacking us means that we're having an impact. They wouldn't be attacking us if we were weak. So I think we, we can be proud of some of our achievements. This is a long-term struggle and uh, the phrase in my lifetime comes to mind. We have very kindly been given an award for our work. You've seen civil society being really uh, vilified, so once in a while to be able to relax and celebrate is a, is a nice thing.